Here's how you make your own game using PlayingCards.io. First, I'm going to go down into the Other Custom and hit Start Game. This brings you into a room that has some cards already set up, but I am going to go into the Edit Mode um, and give myself some more options. First thing I like to do is just remove the things that are here. Give myself a nice blank area. And uh, now I'm going to bring in my own custom card deck. I have made cards that I like. I'm going to scroll down and get rid of everything and bring in my own. So add new card type. I have these cards. I'm going to start with zero. And then don't forget your label. When placing my deck on the game board, I need both an empty card holder and the circle custom card deck. And now I'll go in and customize the cards that I actually want in this deck. Card data. So right now I have all these cards in and I want to add, let's say, a full deck of four of each. But for my particular game, maybe I do not want to use tens. So I am going to move the tens down to nothing. That's four of all the rest of the cards making 40 cards. Let's bring this down. And I want to add some blank pieces. I'm going to you know, model again close to 100. So each student is going to need a place for two two-digit numbers. We're not going to add them. Alrighty. Uh, and then this is also usually done in multiple rounds. So I like to add counters uh, for them to see how far off from 100 they are. So if they got a score of 99, they would give themselves one point because they were a one off. If they had um, a sum of 80, they would give themselves 20 points because they were 20 points off. And the goal here is to not have any points. So there we go. We've got some counters. We've got our deck. The next thing we want to do is customize our hand. If I go into play mode and I pull cards down into my hand, you'll notice they overlap. And for this game, I really want the students to see the full 10 frame. So I do not want the overlap. So I'm going to go here, change deck template, and do no overlap. All right, so let's go in and play. Now they show up real nice. I can put all six down here, and I can even bring them up. I can add them together and give myself a whole bunch of points because that is nowhere close to 100. And that's how you set up. When you're ready to share with someone, share this. What I can do is show what it looks like in incognito mode. So I'm the other player now, and even better, I can show you what this looks like with two split screens. So this person is bringing down their six cards. It's only visible to them. And they're going to put in theirs. They got really close to 100. They got 102, so they only get two points. And we would like to recall the card, so we need to make that edit. Show recall buttons. All right, I think we're in good shape. So now I'm going to hit recall and get my cards again. They're going to get their cards. And then we can play again. When you're finished making a room, if you want to save your room so you can share it with other people, uh, you can export to file. What that does is it makes it so that all of the settings here are automatically saved. All right, let's look at some other cool tools that you can use with PlayingCards.io. 
Okay, I'm going to start here with a um, chessboard. I can pull that in and I can even uh, resize the board, make it smaller on the screen, push it off into the corner. I can add some cool little uh, playing pieces and even change the color of those. I'll continue to customize things until the board is the right size, the game pieces are the right size, and I'm going to include a spinner because that is the purpose of our game. This time let's use a custom board and change it to a 100s chart. I can still use the spinner and my students can practice counting. But because the mathematical objective right now is for them to learn that nine is 10 minus one, and the way you can move that on a hundreds chart is moving down by 10 and then to the left by one, that's the skill, I wanna use playing cards. So I'm gonna go back to my 10 frame cards. And this time I'm even going to change the deck so that I'm only using ones, twos, nines, and tens, and I am putting more nines in the deck so my students have more practice with that idea of nine is the same as 10 minus one. I'm gonna make some final edits and then practice playing the game. Once I'm ready to share the game, I'm gonna hit the share room code. This code will allow other students to play. I can even test that out in an incognito window. And align the two. I'm going to recall all the cards and recall the pieces to start the game. We're going to start with purple, who moves nine. Red, who moves only one. If you have shared the link to your room with anybody else, um, then there is a possibility of lots of other people being in there. So for example, right now I'm sharing this one with the world. Um, and so lots of other folks can come in here and be moving the pieces in real time. Uh, what I'm gonna show you next are ways that you can make this private for your students so that they can play. Under edit mode, I'm going to go to Room Options and Export to File. Now I've got my own file of all the setting changes. I'm going to go back to PlayingCards.io. Go to Custom Room. Now I've got a new code. Edit Mode room options and import from file. It's going to import the one that I just exported. And now I have this all set for my students uh, to play. I might even start with all the pieces back. And now I can copy this. Now this can be really useful because if I'm going to be doing a math workshop, I might have several students um, who are in different breakout rooms and need different rooms. Here's how I would do that. This is a sample of the breakout room activity slide that I use in my presentation. And after I put students into different groups, they're gonna need to know where to go for their game. So I'm gonna copy the URL. Paste it in. And I'll have to do this a couple of times. Import. Copy the new link. Paste it in. And so what you're seeing now are different links for my students to go into. That way they can be in their own room with just their partner and not have everybody else in there.
The nice thing though is only one person has to actually create the game. Once you have their link, you can export it. So once someone's made something amazing, uh, you can import it in, make your, uh, your classrooms, and then your students have those. If you're planning to use this on, let's say, a Tuesday, and your uh, other grade level partner teams are going to use it on a Wednesday, um, as long as you know that the students aren't in here, uh, you can reassign these links and students can log in. Finally, I would like to inspire all of you all to create games and then share them out with the world. Because folks, we're really only in this together if we pledge to be together. So here's how you can do it. You can contribute your game on uh, my website, teresawills.com. And to contribute your game, you simply click that. go back to my website. I can do a search for games and it brings up um, all sorts of different games that people have submitted. It'll bring up the grade levels and the link. So you can click right on it and now you have access to this, which means you can go to edit and you can export to file. Now you have a copy of this game forever. Hope this is useful everyone.